Hi, back again. And this time we're doing a back routine. So I've done chest already. I think that was the first one I put out. Then I did one for shoulders. So we're gonna look at back. And before I start that, I just wanna talk a little bit about the split, because there's been a couple of questions on that. You know, what's the purpose of splitting the body parts up? And it's pretty simple you want to split the body parts up because we want to train enough times per week that we're making a, a good difference to our bodies so we get noticeable results quickly. Um, you know, the, the less you train, the less results you're gonna to get to a degree. If you overtrain, you, you know, that's bad as well. But I'm an advocate of five days in the gym a week. Um, it, it works. You can do less. It will work less that's the bottom line now if you're going to do five days in the gym a week or even if you're only doing three if you try to train your whole body in one session firstly there isn't really enough time in that session if you're looking at a session being say an hour and a half max you know because you're starting to get catabolic after that and burn your own muscle tissue down um, so if you've got an hour and a half there's really not enough time in that hour and a half to get every single body part trained and certainly not trained to the intensity that's go that's needed to, in order to grow any muscle and like I said before we're not talking about becoming Arnold Schwarzenegger we're not like doing serious bodybuilding but we want to grow some muscle because that helps burn calories it consumes more calories than fat does so that that helps you stay lean and also it helps us in middle age and upwards to you know stay strong and be able to do normal chores that we would do around the house as we get older and uh and get ourselves mobile it you know really pays to retain strength so the split allows you to train one body part and then rest it so the next day you might do an opposing body part so you might do chest on a Saturday for example and then on Sunday you're doing back so whilst you're doing that you're not um, carrying on uh, exercising chest what you wouldn't want to do is say do chest on a Saturday and then on Sunday do shoulders because both of them are going to work this front delt and that is going to um, cause it to become, you know, it's going to become catabolic. Uh, you're not going to grow any new muscle tissue all the time that you're working that muscle. So you're really going to get nowhere. So my split goes Saturday chest, Sunday back, Monday no weights at all. Tuesday I'll do arms, so that's biceps and triceps. Wednesday legs. So then I'm doing no upper body at all. So I'm giving my upper body a break on Wednesday. Thursday, shoulders. Friday, off of weights completely. And then Saturday, back to chest again. So th that's the split I run. Um, but have a think about it for yourselves. Uh, and you're, you know, as long as you work it out that you're, you're not continuously working the same parts of the body every single day, you're going to be pretty good. So, on with the back. Uh, I've got to be really careful with back because I've mentioned before in, in some of the other videos that I've had back injuries and that was from lifting ridiculously heavy weights when I was younger. And I still like to deadlift. Uh, deadlifts get a lot of bad press because people do them with poor form. And if you arch your back or try and lift too heavy and sort of you see people sort of doing this bumping movement trying to bump the weight up and that that should be avoided at all costs you should never arch your back you should think about you're poking your buttocks out and you're standing uh, like a silverback gorilla might stand think of it like that where you're sort of butt poked out and your chest poked forward and You'll see in this video, so I'll do the first set. We can see me doing uh, the first set of deads with no weight on the bar at all. And I do quite a few reps with no weight, I think about 15 reps or so. And you'll see there, I've got a nice straight back. I'm bending at the legs. And you've got to imagine it's um, with the bar, 
I always imagine like a plumb line or a pendulum line hanging down from the top of my head right through my body to the floor and I'm trying to sort of stay on that line so the the bar should be traveling in a straight line up and down and my body should be traveling in a straight line up and down when I'm deadlifting I'm trying not to push the bar out or um, my body's not bending too far forward or too p far back I'm just traveling down this central straight line and I'm trying to keep my arms as straight as possible the bars almost running down the front of my legs and then I'm I'm bending in the middle and then as the bar runs past my knees then I start bending at the knees as well so if you start bending at the knees too early um, the bar won't go over them so uh, you, you, you need to get the the form right and if you watch the form in the video you'll see that I do um, a light set then so I'm just doing 10 light so I've got like a plate aside and all these weights are in context to you you know if you're 65 years old and you've never lifted weights before then your weights are going to be a lot different to the weights I'm lifting and equally if you're a 25 year old and you're six foot five and incredibly um, strong naturally and you've lifted weights quite a lot you're probably lifting a lot more than I am so everyone's different don't ever get hooked up on you know what weight is what and who who should lift what there's no such thing it's just what you're lifting is is good for you and we're we're lifting again to failure so on these warm-up sets I'm not I'm just warming up but then when I get heavier um, I start getting into the sort of 10 reps and I'm now getting into the territory where um, the weight is enough that I'm, you know, 10 reps is, is about my limit. And then I do another set for eight reps. I've added a little bit more weight. And on deadlifts, I like to every month, I try and max my weight out just for a single rep and see how I'm getting on strength wise. And that would be really for someone that is got the form down that is very confident with their deadlift i do not recommend these low rep uh weight sort of lifting exercises for people that haven't got good form because that's where you're going to start getting injuries i go down to four reps and when we start getting into this low rep range the reason i'm doing that is to build strength because whilst you can build muscle in the higher rep ranges you can really only develop your strength once you get sort of down to the sub six type rep range if you're failing you know um, six reps or less then you're starting to build strength there and that that isn't my opinion that is scientifically backed up uh, with with considerable amounts of data that if you want to build strength you really need to move into the lower rep ranges and we're still training to failure and finally I go for a, a single lift which you can see you know my legs are <laughs> a bit wobbly on that one so uh, that's incredibly heavy for me now it's nothing compared to what I used to lift and I've had to just get my head around that so some of you guys like me that used to train in the gym when you were younger or you might have used to ha have a military career or something that was highly physically demanding we have to come to terms with the fact that we're not that person anymore we're not that youth uh, anymore that can do these things and remain uninjured and that can be quite a psychological you know hurdle for people to get over that it's a real struggle for some guys to 
want to get back in the gym and even though they can't achieve what they used to achieve when they were younger and it's a shame to not go and train in the gym just based on the fact that you you can't beat 20 year old you so once i finish the deadlifts we move on to dumbbell rows so this is on a bench kneeling on that and i'm trying to um pull the weight up using my back so that that mind muscle connection i spoke about in the other videos i'm really thinking about using the um the sort of uh, upper part of my back to bring my arm up i'm not using my bicep as such and i do uh i do four sets of those and i'm doing about 10 reps nine or ten reps um, again picking a weight that is on the ninth or 10th rep is a real struggle for me you know if you get 15 reps or 20 reps it doesn't matter just you know add a couple more kilos on select a heavier weight and, and go with that if you don't have a heavier weight just go with more reps that's no big deal either it's just going to take you a bit longer to do the exercises so we get the rows done they're a really really good exercise for upper back and that's one of the things that i found um, really helped me with my back injuries so i got a couple of compressions in the spine and that they healed over time with just stretching and sort of amateur yoga type stuff and uh foam roller and you know just trying to lead a sort of healthy lifestyle but what really eradicated a lot of the pain I was feeling was finally getting back to the gym and doing exercises like the dumbbell rows. And I started off a lot lighter. And obviously, as my strength developed, I worked up the weights. But I found that developing muscle tissue in that area has really supported my back. And it's helped my uh, spinal pain you know because i'm guessing the the structure of muscle surrounding the spine is a, a lot more supportive now so i get the rows done and then i move on to chins and chins i don't really set a rep range for i aim to get over 10 um but chins are difficult you know and especially if you're starting out in the gym you might not get one and when I first went back to the gym after a long layoff, I jumped on a chin-in bar and I was used to doing um, like 15 to 20 chin-ups with a weight hanging off me. So I jumped on one and I thought, well, I'll get at least 10 and I couldn't get one. I just hung there and even hanging there was uh, an effort because I'd become weak and I was incredibly fat. So there was no way I was going to be able to pull that body weight up. And chins are you know a, a basic uh life skill that if if you were hanging off the edge of a building or a cliff you would at least want to be able to pull your own body weight back it you know into a place of safety and uh it, it stuff like climbing up into the loft you know if you're um going up a loft ladder and you hang on one of the beams you know that's a lot safer if you can support your own body weight because if the ladder gives way you can pull yourself up into the loft and if you can't do that then you're going to fall on the floor and hurt yourself so they're really really beneficial for general life skills but they are hard so even if you can only do one or if you, even if you can't do one it doesn't matter do what you can do you might be able to do three inches if you can do three inches do you know as many as you can at three inches for three sets so you, you, it might feel a bit silly it doesn't matter because that will improve over time and your aim if you can't do one should be to do one at least you know in the, in the next month you should work towards doing one chin and if you can do 10 great just keep pushing the numbers up so we do three sets of chins then i move on to pull downs and that's on the cable and even though that's similar uh, to chins it's a similar movement what that will help you do is for the people that can't do any chins at all you're able to load that with some weight and you can work those muscles without actually having to hang your body weight off anything so that will help you get better at doing chins in the future because you are strengthening the muscles that you use for that but also you're able to take 
a close grip or a wide grip depending on which attachment you put on that cable. So you, if you take a close grip it's working the outer part of your back. If you take a really wide grip it's it's working the inner part of your back and they're, they're both different so every week I tend to alternate those and you can also do that with chins but sometimes you don't have that option because the, the bars are often fixed in gyms but generally speaking gyms will have a selection of um, bars that you can use on the cable so I do three sets of those to finish and again I'm thinking of when I'm pulling down, I'm pulling down using uh, my back muscles the, and you can feel it sort of under your arms and, and behind you uh, as you're pulling down. I'm pulling down with my back. I'm not using my arm. I'm not trying to pull with my bicep. I'm just pulling down with my back and I'm trying to go to failure on that one as well. And that's it that's the back workout done. I do abs every other day. We've covered that in the other two uh, exercise videos. So if if this for you would be a day that you know you didn't do abs the day before, throw them in as well, hanging leg raises and the uh, the cable pull downs for abs, the crunches. And then off you go, have a post workout shake and go and eat something. Go and eat something that's got some carbs and protein in it that's a, a decent quality meal. I cover diet in the first video. All these videos are in the lifestyle section of my uh, channel. And the first ever video I did, which I think was about the, um, the fitness industry, I'll put a link up to that down below. Uh, that covers diet as well in there, so you can see everything you need to know about what to eat after the gym. Thanks a lot. Next one I'll cover is probably legs. I'll get that film this week and it should be out probably by the end of the week. And I hope that is helpful to people. Um, I'm really pleased with the response we've had off the fitness stuff so far. It's been completely unexpected and uh, I'm really happy that people are getting some, some good use out of it. Take care. Bye bye now.